the foot through its ears. How can you make this? It's very, very complicated to get this ear on the same hand. Now, what you have to do is you have to tell the student you are not graduating unless the ear is on the hand and you have to hold it. All right. Took the student eight hours. Closer to the mic, Fulker. They can't hear you. Um, okay. There you, that's okay. better. Better? Better? Yes. Okay. Well, now this and this picture was in many, many newspapers, many international journals. And at the end, somebody asked the right question, namely, who is going to buy such here? Who will make toys for hands? <laughs> and there is a serious question behind it, namely, the economic question. Why, why would you make such a small thing? And I will show you a little bit later that such small things are maybe too small. Maybe we need it a little bit larger and then you can even make money. But this was certainly a very good advertisement and a very good introduction into the field of making things small. Making things very small. Now next step. If we go back, we go back in history and go back there is a physicist I admire very much. And maybe some of you even read his books. Uh, you are choking Mr. Feynman, for example, is one of those I can really recommend. It is the big, big, the great Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman was a physicist and he was dealing with uh, field quantization and stuff like that that nobody understands. He got for that. Nobel Prize. He's a Nobel laureate. I think 50 points. No, it's a 70. He was actually involved in the Manhattan Project in Los Alamos. Uh, wrote extremely uh, funny stories about his involvement. And this guy was asked by the American Physical Society in 1959. Uh, nearly 50 years ago. Nearly one, one year ago. So he was asked to give a presentation on something nobody ever talked about. He said, okay, I do. And what he was talking about is thinking of the next slide. Next slide. The next slide. He gave a presentation. Okay, like it there. All right, mac mac macro micro and micro nano. No, there's plenty of room at the bottom. All right, back up the one before. Okay, we're there. Yep. And okay. speak up, Fulker. Okay, this was Richard Feynman's famous speech in December, on December 29, 59, in Caltech, California, with a technology for the American Business Society. And what I admire in this speech is the vision. You have to understand the, the viewers here, the audience is much too young to know what a bank is or what a real computer is. A real computer built an entire hall and it's cooled by the Niagara Hall or something like that. It needs a nuclear power station to calculate one plus one, right? These are the old computers in the 50s, 40s, and uh, in, this, in this time nobody talked about small or even quotation. Making things small. And now this guy, Richard Feynman, said, okay, I'm going to give a, a talk of something I'm not involved in, but in production already tells you what it is about. I would like to describe a field in which little has been done, but in which an enormous amount can be done in principle. Most important is that you would have an enormous number of technical applications. What I want to talk about is the problem of manipulating and controlling things on a small scale. In the year 2000, when they look back at this stage, they will wonder why it was not until the year 1916 that anybody could get seriously to move from this direction. What he was talking about was how to make computers small. But at the other day, we have TCDs, we have laptops, and so on. That's a final result of it. He was talking about um, how to make mechanical things small. And he said, I have the problem that my wife comes with a wristwatch. Now, 
What do I do? She says it doesn't work. Now I sit here, my eyes dropping out because I, I, I barely can see this little car at this spot. And I would love to have a little guy who glides into the watch and repair it. Or what do I, if I uh, sick, if I could swallow something, something the uh, uh, surgeon would move through my body, look for the bad part, cut them out, and leave. Things like that. These are all wishes that today are we now on the way. Not going into the detail, but these things have really turned out to be real, to be changing our lives. The first thing was electronics, was an electronic micro. The second is micro systems, micro technology. You will live here coming some the The third part is, and he says, that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate what can be done, uh, what, what can be done really in technology is to move individual atoms to a place where you want them, to manipulate individual atoms. That's what we call today nanotechnology. Oh, Kurt, can yeah. I ask you again to speak up? The connections, uh, uh, the, 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 the video is great, the audio yeah. is difficult. Okay, uh, is it better now? Yes. I, sim I simply, uh, a little bit more. okay. Now, just to summarize, this guy in Feynman, fantastic scientist, fantastic physicist, he said, I look in the future, and what I see is that this becomes small. Small machines, small electronics, and finally individual atoms that are moved around. Last thing is nanotechnology, which is everywhere today. Now, just to give you a brief uh, view into the scale here, don't look for the details, just look on the next slide for the overall picture. Okay. Is it there? Okay. What you see on that, on, on, on that slide is a scale. The arrow points to larger. And what you see is we start with an elephant and we end up on the on the upper right side you have an elephant, lower left, you have a single atom. Now make things smaller and smaller. You come from the elephant to the uh, bird, and finally on the, the lowest part above the blue line, you have an electronic circuit, which is today a couple of atoms wide, 